Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Biz Tips. Guys, oh my God, I met this young lady at a conference, RPX, in Vegas. We were just, you know, charging our phone. Yes. And we started the conversation, and she just blew my mind. I learned so much about nonprofits. I was like, wow, I had to bring her to the podcast. Crystal, what's up? Hey, 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 how are you? Oh, I am so, so excited to be here. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for jumping on. I'm excited to hear all the gems you're going to share. So before we jump into all that, who is Crystal? <laughs> Crystal Durham is a wife to an mm-hmm. amazing husband. And he says, I'm amazing. We just celebrated <laughs> our eight years anniversary yesterday. Congratulations. We made it past that, what they call that, that seven year mark. So we're excited. Okay. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. We are parents of 10 children in a blended family. And, but the good thing about it is, is that our children are all adults. Our last two Mm -hmm. that are twins turn 18 on Saturday. They graduate high school. We have 12 grandchildren. I, um, (laughs) I, right. I'm a several time entrepreneur. So I not only have this business, Crystal Durham Mm -hmm. Enterprise, but I also have 90 Days of Love Crisis Center for age out foster youth. And we also Mm. have 90 day housing for men and women coming out of prison. And I am a first time author. (laughs) I love it. That's amazing. So 10 kids, <laughs> 10, 10 adult children, <laughs> adult kids, right? Adult kids. That's, that's, that's very yes. important to say. I think yes. that's amazing. Um, as an entrepreneur, how do you balance that? You know, having kids in a family, and right. not just one or two, but like a, a, a whole team. And then also an amazing husband. How do you balance everything? It, it do take a lot, but it takes teamwork. Like all of Mm. us are involved, you know, Mm. and we have some amazing adult children. Like my daughter is my my, um, social manager, um, media manager. So then we have someone who does bookkeeping. My husband's in the county. So we, and then we have one who does, um, um, what what does he does? He does clothes. He said he has a clothing line. And so we have different people that help us. My younger children do the filming. So whenever I'm on Instagram and you see the YouTube is getting ready to launch, they do all the filming. So I get them involved. Wow. And and I love it. Yeah, family. And we choose days. So I don't take up all their time. I say, okay, on Friday night, it's film night. Our Mm. Saturday guys, we're going to film for four hours and they come over. I have a daughter that travels over here to film. And so they're excited um, to be a part and watch us grow because guess what? They benefit. They benefit for the growth of my business um, in all areas. Um, I don't know if you noticed not, we are Instagram. We're minor Instagram influencers now. You know, we hit that 18,000 followers. (laughs) So um, we get a lot, we do a lot um, with reels as far as um, Instagram and growing, but getting the family involved has, and making sure that I spend Mm -hmm. time with them as well. So we have that time that we go out, we do dinners. I'm spending time with my grandkids. So it's just getting them involved, spending time with them. Then they don't mind getting involved. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, but I think that's genius because now you spend time with them. They get to see what you're doing. Yes. So they become part of it. When you guys yes. can be at dinner, ideas will start flowing. Yes. That's amazing. Exactly. Congratulations. I love Thank it. Thank you. So Thank let, you. let's let, let's die. Let's go back, right? Mm-hmm. How did you get into your business where you work with nonprofits and like you're a coach or consultant? How'd you get into that? I, well, in 2015, um, I started my nonprofit organization, but it was from when me, I was taken in trouble youth years ago, mm-hmm. when my daughter's in high school. And so when I moved to Atlanta, um, God just impressed upon me that my work wasn't done. I thought it was done mm. when my daughter graduated high school. I was living in Atlanta. I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm free from, you know, and no, it was not done. And so he had me to help age our foster youth. And because mm. of the reason I'm helping age out foster youth because four of my children are adopted mm. and they were in foster care. And so um, that is how I got into finding wow. out that 
23,000 youth aged out the foster care system with no place to call home. Oh and that God. literally just broke my heart. And so that's how 90 Days of Love was created. I started finding out what to do. I took coaching classes. I had mm -hmm. a coach. I had a mentor. Because for me, I don't look good. Well, I do look good in orange, but I didn't want an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> 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 so I wanted to make sure that I was mm -hmm. doing a thing and I was operating in compliance and that was following yeah. all the laws. And so I started doing the work. And as I was serving and doing the work, people started donating. They started okay. giving to me. I started building partnerships. I started building the book. I started doing the work and the funds were coming. And so wow. people who wanted a nonprofit or who started a nonprofit, like, I've been doing this for 15 years. How are you just doing it? You're getting all this money. And <laughs> before I knew it, I was sitting down. Here's the thing. I was sitting down with people for free. Yeah. I would bring them into my office. I would walk over the program, tell them what to do for two to three wow. hours. And one thing about one of my daughters who were staying with me at the time, she's yeah. a strategist. So she watched me show these people and they did nothing with the work that they got free. Oh, wow. They were getting me for free because I want to help. And yeah. so one day she called me into a meeting. She said, I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you all the information you've been getting people. She had been listening to what I was sharing. She wow. had set up a whole website, told me the programs that I was already doing that I didn't know. It's amazing. <laughs> and before I know it, my business was launched. And right after, see, God always put things in order first. Mm -hmm. Right after I launched the business, someone on Facebook seen me and was like, I need you to come to Florida and speak mm. to over 350 people about starting a nonprofit organization. And so wow. it, it went up from there. It and so now it explodes. It explodes to, it's just, um, I'm just excited, you know, so, just to just. Um, I, I'm so excited for you but also so amazed on how your daughter pays so much attention to everything you were doing yeah and literally birthed the business with yes. you right yeah that's pretty exciting <laughs> and she does all my marketing all my promotions everything you see she does it she does my book cover and wow. she's amazing and so as i made money of course i paid my daughter i want to pay course. somebody else exactly you know? and so she's in a family that's it. She's my brand marketer and my promoter and everything that we do. But she saw it in me. I wow. All I wanted to do was serve my community and help mm. people. But the people I was helping for free weren't doing anything with yeah. the information. They got to pay to pay attention. Th that's so true. Yeah. They have to pay to pay attention. <laughs> if they get it free or in like free consultations, attention. they don't show up. Like, mm -hmm. no. Why is your consultation 150 75? Because you'll show up and you'll do the work that I tell you. Exactly. After my VIP days. Why my VIPs are seven fifty? Because you'll show up and you'll do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's so true. Now I, I want to dive into the actual work that you do when it comes to nonprofit, right? Because you hear a lot of entrepreneurs and different folks that was like, you know, I want to start a nonprofit. I want to give back. I want to help people but they don't know where to start. So tell us right. about, you know, how do you start a nonprofit? Like right. what kind of nonprofit <laughs> is it? Cause I'm sure there's so much around this that people don't know. Right. Well, I help age out foster youth and there mm -hmm. is a lot of nonprofits out. I mean, I just, just doing this business alone. I have met so many people that are doing so many different nonprofit organizations, but how mm -hmm. you started it is first of all, you have to be committed. You have to be okay. committed to do the work because it is hard work. You have to be have that passion to serve your community no matter what it looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So for when we went to go serve the women coming out of prison, we could have been very judgmental. Like, oh, this woman yeah. did this and this part. But you can't be judgmental when you're serving the community. You've got to go in with love and help mm -hmm. them do everything that God tells them to do. And I think the, the biggest thing that people forget or think that doing nonprofit work is easy because they think mm. it's not a business, but it's a business. Mm. Yeah. And you must treat it like one. You must have yes. your books Say in that order. Again. <laughs> you must treat it like a business. You have to have a business plan. Mm -hmm. And here's the funny thing. I ran my nonprofit better than I ran my business. Because when I first mm. got my business, I didn't, I didn't think about the money I was getting because like I said, I was serving 
yes. in that level. So I had that. But when it came to the nonprofit, I was like, oh, no, I need to know where this money is going. I need to know what this. And God called me on the carpet one day. He was like, mm. you brought in over half a million dollars in your business and in, in, in kind of delicious. But you don't even know how much you bought in your own business in the first year. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Because I was just getting the money, just spe- you know, yeah. just having fun. When I sit down and realize that I had to now change and run my business like a business, a business, God really was able to promote me and help me move forward. And so nonprofits, you have to run your business like a business. You need a business plan mm-hmm. because you need to know where you're going, yeah, how you're going to get there, what are the services you're going to be provided, what is the cost. Know the scripture. When a man yes. builds his house, he must count the cost. Of course. We, we have to count the cost. It costs money to even start it. Exactly. To even Because you have to pay for a P.O. box. You have to pay for someone to, to, to pay to get it done. You have to pay the mm-hmm. IRS. You have to the pay forms. the forms, everything. So you have to count the cost. And if you're not willing to count the cost, if you can't pay for a consultation, then you might as well not start a nonprofit because you're going to be struggling mm. and you're going to be coming out your pocket. You have to count yeah. the cost first by creating that budget for your nonprofit operational costs. Okay. So if I was to tell somebody what to do in the beginning to start up, count the cost. What would it cost for me to get my 501c3? And normally okay. for people like me, we're 15 to 2,500. Mm-hmm. We went up because the IRS went up and also the paperwork became longer. Gotcha. The stimulations are stiffer now in order to get people approved. You got to yeah. know what you're doing. And we are experts at that. <laughs> you know, we just had five it. get approved um, in just this week. But you also want to make sure that you count the cost. Okay. Because when you get your nonprofit, you have to first register with the Secretary of State. Mm-hmm. It varies by different states. Um, Virginia is like $220 to register mm-hmm. your business. Once you yeah. register that, you have to get approved through them as a nonprofit. Then you get your EIN number, which is free. Huh. I didn't know you needed an EIN number for nonprofits as well. Yes, yes, okay. yes, because it's an entity. This is an okay. entity. It's a separate entity from your non from your for profit. You cannot run your your for profit and then just try to connect it. It can connect, but it has to have its own entity. Gotcha. Separate everything, funds, bank account, EIN number, so that the IRS can identify you, right? Gotcha. When, when people want to file taxes, the IRS needs to be able to identify you. A lot of people do it backwards. They get the EIN number and then try to register yeah. it. And then the state says, oh, sorry, that name's already taken. You can't register it. So now you're stuck with an EIN number you can't even use. So you gotcha. want to register with the Secretary of State, get approved, get that approval mm-hmm. letter that you're a nonprofit in your state, EIN number, and then mm-hmm. you want to hire somebody like me to do your 501c3. Gotcha. Now, oh, I see. So yeah, registration, EIN, then 501c3 forms. C3. That's yes. where you come in. That's it. Gotcha. And there's okay. two different five. There's two different forms. Okay. Um, the first form is the short form. And the short form is for those who are just want a mentorship program or you just want to speak. You don't want to get in mm-hmm. over fifty thousand dollars. You don't want to get housing, land, property. You don't want none of that. That is mm-hmm. what a short form is. A long form is is that you're looking to house, um, mm-hmm. teach financial literacy, anything financial literacy. Oh, you have to do the long form. Got right. It. Anything with housing, churches. Um, providing um, a building for a mentorship program, a gym, a facility, anything like that, you have to do the long form. A lot of people are not going to break down the difference to you because why the long form costs more and they want you to do that. But I always Mm. walk my client through the process. And sometimes I may say to them, you know what? Because I I know them, I probably said, this person ain't going to get out and do nothing for the next three years. So go ahead and do the short form. Once you start building that um, your you business, your board, then come back and we'll redo your your um, 501c3 to the long form. Gotcha. Now, and the thing also, the thing about the short form is that if you do do a short form and someone walks up like you and say, Crystal, I want to give you $50,000 mm-hmm. or I want to give you property, I cannot receive it. The mm. IRS will flag me because the person because it's a cannot, short form. It's a short oh, form. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a short form. And people... Huh. 
get sucked into doing stuff and don't know it. But me, I'm up oh front. I'm going to tell you which one is best for you and yeah. the reason why I do what I do. Now, let's take it a step further, right? They got the form. You help them do that. The other piece that a lot of people struggle with is funding, right? Because, yes. you know, it's hard. Like, they're like, oh, my God, I have a nonprofit. I don't know how to get funding. Tell us a little bit. You right. know, don't give us all the secrets, but just because it was like a little nugget. Right. So when it comes to funding, what should people start thinking about? Now, I just did a whole 30-minute um, training on this mm -hmm. today. So when it comes to funding, first of all, you want to know exactly what you're asking funding for. Okay. Budget, yeah. right? Because nobody's just going to give you money because you're not profit. Exactly. They want to know. And I would say, you What's know, you had, a little, you had a church, you in a school and they collect the money. You're like, wait, where is my money really going? Because <laughs> we're in a free building. Exactly, where, right? Where is my money? I'm only going to give you $10 because I don't know where my money going. Mm -hmm. So people need to know where the money is going and what is it for. So for an example, when I started my nonprofit organization, I had mm -hmm. my budget ready. What was it going to mm -hmm. cost for me to go to school? What was it going to cost for the 501c3? What was it going to cost for the PO box? What was it going to mm -hmm. cost for the website? That was the operational cost. People okay. need to know what they're funding. And also, not a lot of people get away from fundraising. Start fundraising first, right? Oh. Because when you get out there and you start fundraising, we did candles. We paid our whole operational cost in a year with candles. Candles, Wait. popcorn, Krispy Kreme, donuts. <laughs> How? How you pay it with candles? I'm, I'm because confused. we sold candles. So ah. each board member, I had nine board members. In each board mm -hmm. member, our first meeting, I tell you, I'm very professional. I have everything they needed. I had the fundraiser. I told mm -hmm. them how much money they needed to make when they came back. And each board member made over $250 every mm -hmm. single time we met each month. And I had nine board members. Do the math on that. They yeah. were able to fund the organization. Now, when you get a board behind you that's going to help fund it, also another thing people don't realize is that board members are supposed to give monthly to the nonprofit operational costs. Really? Monthly. You do not that. pay your board. You do not pay your board. Your board pays into the nonprofit organization to the operational cost. So what you do is you will vote at that board yeah. meeting. We're going to vote $25. Our board has been paying $50 since 2015 monthly to the operational wow. cost. That's and amazing. So, what, what's, what's some of the benefits that the board members has by being part of a board of the nonprofit? The benefits is that they're serving their community. There's no financial mm. benefits ever to a board member. Okay. They're there to serve their community. It's good to put on their resume and their bio mm -hmm. when they're out there, out there doing the community. So that's why I encourage people, don't find people sitting home, find people out working. Because yeah. why? They're going to work on your board. You'll find people say, oh, they're my active. aunt, she can do it. She ain't doing nothing. She ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. Wow. This is so much gem. I love it. So um, you talked about the funding, you talk about the forms, you talk about them leveraging you to help them get started. Normally, tell us some of the success stories, right, that you had from some of the clients you work with. Okay. Oh, this is amazing. So my first client, he had already had, he didn't have his 501c3. Someone said they filed it two years ago. And he mm. never got the documents. So after him coming into my coaching class, because that's how I started. I didn't start off following. I started off coaching people who mm -hmm. wanted to start their nonprofit organization. And it's because that's what my passion was. Yeah. Right? So he came in and he's telling me his story. And I'm like, okay, well, that don't sound right. They should have sent you a submission letter. You should have got a receipt. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So come to find out after much um, um, pressure, I pressured him. He finally got in touch with the lady. And at that moment, she had been filed his documents over two years. Wow. She's never. So he's been out. She never did it. Never did it. And that's important. If somebody's doing your paperwork, they need to submit you the submission letter and all the yes. information. Right. So anyway, he comes into my class every year. I would do a Christmas breakfast. Our first Christmas breakfast, we gave away coats, toys, mm -hmm. um, food, Sneakers, Jordan sneakers. We had Salento who was here. We had so many people. We had Power 103 was here. Wow. And they all donated their time. And we didn't pay a dime for anything. That's amazing. And we had over 236 coats, right? We were serving 
families living in motels. So we gave away 186 coats that day. Wow. And um, that, that same time, I asked my volunteers, which was about 35 to 40 volunteers, to bring mm -hmm. blankets because mm -hmm. he was serving a homeless. And so I said, well, I'm going to get my volunteers to bring blankets for your homeless. And he was like, why would you do that? You're collecting coats. You're running your nonprofit. I said, because the homeless still needs to be served. I have yeah. a passion for homeless, but that's not my gifting area. That's yours. Yeah. So volunteers mm. for blankets filled to the top of this room. He opened it. He was so shocked. He was able wow. to go serve his homeless without taking money out of his pocket through in-kind donations. So the mm. following year, he says to me, he says, um, I'm going to buy 200 sleeping bags. And as soon as he said, bye, I said, no, you're not. No, you're mm -hmm. not. You're not going to go buy 200 and something sleeping bags, take money from your household. You're going to get mm. the community to serve. And so he's like, yes. how can I do that? So I told him, I said, put your wife on the phone. He put his wife in on the Zoom. I said, he wants to give away 200 sleeping bags. She said, I know. He told me. I said, well, he's not going to take no money out of the household. Don't let him take near dime. And she said, thank you, Miss Crystal. Thank you, because he keeps doing it all the time. And so I said, I understand. I see his heart, but you have so many other people who want to give to you, but they mm. won't because he's, he's playing God in these people's lives. And God yeah. has people already assigned to be a blessing to others. They need to see yeah. the soul into the ground, right? And so he promised. He said, okay, I'm not going to do it. I said, this is what you want to do. So I already had his website up because I have someone who yeah. designs websites. So if you need a website, we got that already in the package there that go. they do. And so- I had the website up. I had him go into his church, talk to his pastor. He was able to get up in front of the community. The next Sunday he showed up, they had 200 sleeping bags. Wow. He had a fully wow. funded event without coming out of his pocket. That's amazing. And he could not believe it. He was like in tears. He said, I'm so used to doing it. I said, yeah, you're so used to being playing God. Yeah. And God doesn't have a chance to get into the lives of others. Mm. And his church was like, we're so glad. We didn't know you were doing this. This is amazing. We'll help you every year. Yeah. And now he's getting corporate sponsors because he got his That's letter. Amazing. He went, he got his first corporate um, grant for Walmart, um, $5,000. So yeah. So That's people, amazing. People I love just, it. And people think it's humbling to say, I'm taking it out of my pocket. No, that's pride. That's yeah. that's really pride, you know, because you want to do it, but you don't yeah. want allow other people to help come in because we're a community and the community yeah. should be serving the community. It's also about the, you got to think about it, right? The reason no one was able to help him because he wasn't telling anyone. He wasn't telling right? it. So you got to let people know what you're exactly. doing because if they don't know, they can't flow you. So, <laughs> exactly. And another thing that he wasn't doing, he wasn't telling people he was homeless before. Mm, he wasn't and sharing his story. He wasn't. And I didn't know. I thought he mm. was just helping because I'm, I'm, we're partners. So every year yeah. we're doing things together. And one day he was like, yeah, because when I was homeless and I like almost hit the roof. I said, wow. when was you homeless? He said, years ago, I used to sleep in my car and blah, blah, blah. I said, you never share this story. Yeah. You, you got to share story. this story. And he shared it at the church that day. And people were like, oh my God, you're a blessing. This, this, and that, and everything. People gave more because of his story. Because of his story. Yeah. You have to share Ooh, your that's story. a gem. Yeah, you have share to share your story. your story. That's how you're able to get more to provide yes, more. Share your story. That's amazing. Because it's a testimony. It's a testimony. Yeah. I mean, my testimony, I was raped, molested, kidnapped. Physically, oh mentally God. abused. I was an alcoholic on drugs by the time I was 28. I looked 60 when I was 28. Now that I'm 60, I look 28. <laughs> hey, I love it. <laughs> and wow. So I went through majority when I when I went to serve HL Foster Youth, I felt like just because I took the children in, I was like, but God, mm -hmm. you know, how can I be a testimony? And he said, because you went through just about everything I Foster that they're going, that they're going through. have gone through. They've been molested, yeah. raped, kidnapped, and I'll just cry because I didn't know my story really would have been an impact to those, but wow. it really has been and how I survived it. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> that it, it, it I, we may have to do a second session because <laughs> I want to hear about that story, right? <laughs> so we'll have to come back. Guys, you definitely have to come back. So to wrap things up, what is one thing you would share with anyone who's thinking about starting a nonprofit, has a nonprofit, or 
in the process of getting a nonprofit together. One thing I would say is um, do your research. Find mm -hmm. out who is doing what in your community, right? Because we, you have to get approved. If you haven't been approved, in order to approve, we got to say that you belong in that community. If someone yeah. else is already 10 other organizations are serving the homeless in your community, you might not get approved. So you got to mm -hmm. find your niche in that area, right? You got to find out what are you going to bring to the table? Are you going to just serve them soup? Or are you going to serve them soup and then provide mm -hmm. resources? Right. Gotcha. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. Because you what? You did your research. So do your research. Scout out the land. Remember Moses? They send them out and they scouted out the land yes. and found out who was doing what and how they can conquer the land. So you want to be able to search your community and find out who is doing what in your community. And then that's book amazing. a consultation. <laughs> <laughs> How do they do that? Like, well, do they go to your Instagram? They can go to my website? Instagram. My Instagram is, is Mr. and Mrs. Derm. And then my website is crystalderm.com. So either or you can find me on Instagram, Mr. and Mrs. Derm or crystalderm.com and book your nice. consultation and I'll walk you through it. <laughs> Check out Crystals. If you need help with your nonprofit, she is the young lady that you need to go to. She's going to help you. I'm telling you, she's full of gems. So go to crystalderm.com or go on IG. She got some good content on IG too. So definitely <laughs> check her out. Thank you again for jumping on, Crystal. This was amazing. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me.